This is just her karma. And who are we to stand in front of the karma that people have earned in their lives? You guys ever heard of a victimless crime? I think this is one of those. What's up, everybody? My name is Mel, and welcome to Life Coaching by Mel. Here at Life Coaching by Mel, we speak truth. Not your truth, not my truth, but the Lord's truth. And we're here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Hit me in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this topic and do your part to help the channel grow even more by sharing this with at least one person. Matter of fact, share it with everyone that you know. Probably the most viral topic that's going on right about now is the domestic violence and the issues that's been revealed between Cassie and P. Diddy. It's something that's going crazy. Uh, it's shocking, but it's not surprising. If you know anything about Diddy, you know this is just the next thing on his list, and it's the next thing that has been revealed to us. And by all means, he's a loaded piece of crap that should be put under the jail. I don't know about y'all, but I'm all about a public execution. I know some of y'all may be too far, but I live in a... Deep in the heart of Texas. So here in Texas, we do that thing. But anyway, I want to give you guys a different angle. I want to give you guys something else to ponder. This is not necessarily telling you how to think. This is me requesting and asking and encouraging you to just have a mind where you can think on both sides. Because here on Life Culture by Mel, we speak truth regarding the family. So let's put Diddy, let's put Cassie, let's put any man or any woman involved in this situation, any celebrity, let's put them to the side and let's bring this conversation home to us. How does it affect our everyday? Because we do know domestic violence may be in your home. It may be in your neighbor's home. It may be in your church member's home. Domestic violence goes on every single day. Is Cassie truly the victim in this situation? I want you guys to ask yourself that question, and I want you to answer in the comment section below. And let me be clear, what I'm saying here is not just strictly about the incident that we have become more aware of now. Being that the videos have come out, the pictures have come out of what Diddy did to her in that hotel room, it further brings credence to the claims that she's made in court. So we now see what she was saying. So I'm not talking about that specific instance. I'm asking in totality, with their relationship, is Cassie the victim in this situation. Should we look at her and say, man, poor Cassie. Let me be clear on this particular stance. I'm 100% against domestic violence. Now you'll never hear me say the words, a man should never hit a woman. I believe no one should hit anyone. I believe that everyone should keep their hands to their self. Well, man, what about you? You got three sisters, you got a mama, you got a wife, you got a daughter that's coming here in the next couple months. I know that. My message to each and every one of them, including what I would say to my daughter, is no one should hit anyone. And honestly, it should be further emphasized to the woman being that she has less strength in most cases. So I will say to you, yes, it does hurt to see Cassie get hit like that and get slung around. And Pete Diddy is the scum of the earth. But any domestic violence issue I see, I want full context. I want to see the full story. I want to hear the full story. I'm sorry if that don't jive with you, but that's just my perspective. But I found a post, guys, by a man by the name of Shadaya Knight, who put this Cassie situation in a pretty interesting perspective. Let's read what he had to say. Cassie personifies the three stages of modern woman goals in her dating life. First stage, she was in a relationship with a good man, Ryan Leslie, who treated her nice, but she would leave him the day Diddy visited them at a studio session. It's called hypergamy. The insatiable nature of women, of wanting the most powerful man. Second stage, now she's with Diddy, the powerful man who literally controls the music industry. In her mind, she thinks this powerful man will push her to the next level. But alas, her music career starts declining. Instead, this man sees her for what she sees, a shameless opportunist, so he uses and abuses her. Third stage, now washed up, probably Diddy done with her, as there's always a new pop star who wants to F the boss. She leaves the relationship, finally settles with a real man, a man who will heal what he didn't damage. There's really nothing to feel pity about Cassie in this whole saga. It was just karma. She left Ryan Leslie heartbroken, only to end up being literally broken by the man she left Ryan for. It should be a lesson to all these women, those rich, powerful men you run to, majority of them view you as nothing but toys, for their own pleasure. Learn or perish. Again, that's Shadaya Knight. He's a vlogger or blogger. I found this on Facebook. So if you want to reach out to him, do so. 
you will not be alone because he's pretty much getting attacked <laughs> by a lot of women, especially, but people overall. And I see those people are saying that he's justifying what happened to Cassie. I don't think anyone justifies that. And that's why I say this conversation has to be done and handled by mature people. Because if you look at this situation for what it is, of course it's jacked up. If you look at it for one single instance, of course it's completely jacked up. But you have to bring context into the situation, context into the conversation, in order to truly apply the logic that's needed. Shadea said a word that I really want to lean on here, and that word is karma. I find it funny, ladies and gentlemen, because no one, no one used the word karma more than women, let's be more specific, black women. And they put that karma on you and any one of their enemies in an instant. They really do believe that things can go wrong for you if you cross them. But it's funny to me, extremely funny that they don't believe anything bad can happen to them. Like they can go around doing anything in the world and anything bad to other people, but they forget all about karma when it's time for something to come back to them. Ain't that funny? I'm dying on the inside laughing, I promise you that. Is it possible that what Cassie experienced with Diddy was simply her karma for what she has done in her past? And I know many of you is like, ain't no way. No matter what she's done to anyone, there's no way that she would deserve what she received from Diddy. I know fast forward to 2024, fast forward to when this video took place, I believe it was 2016, 2018. There's no way that she deserved that based on anything that happened in her past. I want to say to you guys, it's pretty convenient for you guys to say this now. Because you guys had a whole different tune a little while ago. When Cassie and Diddy first broke up, you guys, yes you pointed out that this was her karma for the way that she handled Ryan Leslie. You guys told Cassie that this was your karma. I know you don't believe me, but I have proof. Let's take a look. I found this article. It was October 17, 2018. It says, Ryan Leslie, after Diddy and Cassie broke up, the internet celebrates karma. Ryan Leslie probably didn't think that his name would resurface in the media when one of his former artists became single again. But this week, the news broke that Cassie Ventura and Sean Diddy Combs were breaking up, going their separate ways after almost 11 years together. The two were linked romantically for years before they finally went public with their romance in 2012. Diddy, 48, and Cassie, 32, met through her former producer and were first linked in 2007. The former producer was Ryan Leslie who was the one who discovered her back in 2004. Leslie also worked with her on her first single, Me and You. As for the reason for Diddy and Cassie's breakup, celebrity news site Love B. Scott has reported that Combs may have found love with another woman, 26-year-old model Jocelyn Chu. The two were spotted at a Drake concert in Los Angeles. Reps for Diddy and Cassie have not issued any statement, but a source told People the decision was amicable and they remain friends. They added about Cassie's future plans, Cassie is going to focus on her music and acting career. Even though Ryan Leslie hasn't been linked to Cassie for years, people are now bringing him back into the picture, saying the breakup looks like karma. During an old interview with DJ Vlad, Ryan Leslie addressed the rumors that he had dated Cassie. He seemed to step around the answer, saying that they were very close and they had a connection, but he did admit that he loved her and that they shared a deep passion for music. When Cassie chose to sign with Diddy's label and leave Ryan Leslie behind, he appeared to be understandably devastated. Now that Cassie appears to be left behind for another woman, the internet have Ryan's back. One commenter on Twitter says Cassie and Diddy broke up after 11 years, no ring, no baby, girlfriend for 11 years, yet someone's dying. Another person said, laugh out loud, poor Ryan Leslie wrote Diamond Girl for Cassie and she still blue ticked him and dated Diddy. Life has a funny way of turning full circle. Karma. Another person says, I'm laughing at Cassie. Diddy is doing what she did to Ryan Leslie. Karma is a B. Somebody posted Ryan Leslie after hearing Diddy left Cassie. <laughs> That's the famous laugh from Kawhi Leonard from my listeners. Me and You, one of Cassie's biggest hits, was released in 2006 and was written and produced by Ryan Leslie. The song hit Billboard Hot 100 that year and remained in the top 40 for nearly five months. However, Leslie, whose own song, Addiction, featured Cassie, has always been humble in the way he handled being left behind. 
Man, I don't think any of those people with them not being here would want me to broach that subject. I mean, I already had a conversation with him, Diddy. Ryan Leslie explained in an interview with The Breakfast Club back in 2013. It's life, man. People have to do what they want to do to be happy. I just have one distinct question. What the hell happened? <laughs> what happened, y'all? Is it still karma? How can y'all easily see a karma then, but can't see it now? Now, I know some of y'all may have revisionist history and say, I ain't think that then. And I get it, it's easy because, you know, you have more evidence now. Now you view her as a victim. Now you view her as someone who was being wrong, not someone who was doing wrong. I get it. And I definitely get it when it comes to, now that we have a man that's the villain, oh yeah, we can definitely take her blame out of this. And we've done this conveniently throughout the years. You see case after case where there's a man and a woman involved with the criminal activity or whatever the issues all within a relationship, and we easily can decipher what the woman may have been forced to do. We can easily decipher why she is not fully the blame for what she did. It's my abundant belief that women, specifically black women, cannot do any wrong in this world. Even when we do hold them accountable at one point by calling it karma in 2018, at some point she can find the narrative to wiggle out of that accountability and land in victimhood. I think Ryan Leslie knows that Diddy is a killer. Speaking out against Diddy was detrimental for his career and probably his life. So that's why we hadn't heard anything up until now from Ryan. I did see an article that was written back in December of 2023 that him and Cassie are getting back together for professional reasons to put out more music. So who knows? Was this video being released and being leaked was part of that plan? You know, we'll see based on what the music comes out. I'm sure they're going to have some what's love got to do with it vibes on that new album. And speaking of Tina Turner, that's somebody else we can go down the rabbit hole of someone who was equally evil within a relationship, but then able to use victimhood to pad her pockets. We never fully got Ike's side of the story, but we've had to live with what Tina had to say over the years and dispel this man, even though there are rumors and concrete evidence of people speaking that were there that will say that Tina was just as bad as Ike. I'm not saying Cassie was equally fighting Puff Daddy or Diddy. I'm saying she's not that big of a victim as we try to make it to be. Because when you go into relationships such as this, you know what comes with the territory. You mean to tell me nobody warned Cassie of Diddy's character? You mean to tell me no woman said, hey, watch out there. You can hear people like Jaguar Wright speak on the dynamic around P. Diddy and the ways in which she would try to look out for women. And people just exile her to being crazy. And the fact that Cassie either ignored or chose to go forward regardless of what outcome she would have says a lot about her. And I think we just as men, I could th think that's what Shadea's point was all about. And I know that's what my point is. You can't have it both ways, women. You can't say how strong you are. You can't say how mighty you are, how more intellectual you are how much greater you are, how much you do not need men at all. And then yet say you can be manipulated by an older man. Yet say you can be groomed. Yet say you need other men to protect you. You can't have it both ways. Either you are more powerful, either you are all knowing, I am woman, hear me roar, or you are the weaker vessel. You can't have it both ways. And if you are the weaker vessel, then you should respond accordingly and live your life accordingly. For the video that came out, Cassie is a victim of domestic violence, but she's not an overall victim, and she's not blameless, and she's not innocent. I say let's wait and see this thing play out. Let's do that. Let's just wait and see. Because as you guys said in 2018, this is just her karma. And who are we to stand in front of the karma that people have earned in their lives? You guys ever heard of a victimless crime? I think this is one of those. Not the specific domestic violence issue, but just this entire scenario. I don't feel bad for Ryan Leslie. I don't feel bad for Diddy. I don't feel bad for Cassie. This new white man she with. I don't feel bad for none of these people. It's all fair in love and war. But I have a very simple question that's very direct. There's one woman, there's three men. Who's the common denominator? In this whole dynamic, who's the common denominator? Does that really look like a victim to you? So what can we learn from this? How can we bring this home? Let's help our daughters not chase hypergamy. And some will say that's an innate thing. But I would say, honestly, it's how we raise our daughters. We give them everything they want. We give them the world. They don't have to earn anything. And I'm just getting into fatherhood, so I don't have this mastered at all. But I'm telling you that I've seen it play out with my sisters. I've seen it play out with other women that because she received everything from daddy and never received any challenges, she's always looking for the next daddy. 
And whatever package that comes in, she will accept as long as the end goal is that money. So, yes, she will accept domestic violence. And yes, she will accept continual disrespect. That doesn't mean anything as long as the paper coming. Because if we've been honest, ladies and gentlemen, did she actually leave Diddy? According to the article I read, Diddy just moved on to the next young thing. If you know more information about that part of it, please hit me in the comment section and let me know. But the reality is, she's always chasing daddy. So how can we raise our daughters to not chase daddy? How can we teach them to have internal fulfillment? That the only dad that they really choose to look for is the Lord. Are we to be every solution for them or are we to point them to the Lord? Are we to show them that when hard times come or any time come or whatever you may need, you put your eyes on him. Because the moment she leaves our home, there will be sharks. Men will be looking for any vulnerability and any need that you may have and try to supply that in order to get what they want. And then you're all caught up in their web where you can't get free from. Now you do everything that they ask in order to get your needs met. And you become so deep in it that that is now your new reality. Instead of just viewing Cassie as just this innocent, blameless young lady, Look at the choices that she made for herself. Look at what she chose to do, the environment she chose to put herself in, and what that led her to. If you do that, then possibly you'll begin to view your daughter different. You'll begin to view your wife different. You'll begin to view women different overall. You'll be able to apply correction in love whenever needed to help prevent them from facing all these traps. They're beasts out here. They're literal beasts of men out here aiming to attack women every single day. But with the mindset of hypergamy, with the mindset of get it at all costs, it's costing you your life. I hope this message was encouraging for someone. Hope you see this from a different angle. Hope this allows you to say exactly what you feel about it. And if you'd like to do so, feel free to hit me in the comment section below. I want to hear your thoughts. I will interact with you. Let's have this conversation. Love you guys. Take care. Let's go.